know what family would it be as. So uh, I've been trying to make this video. But anyway, uh, just dealing with the Lord, seeing what he's saying. But basically, I'm just dealing with um, what may seem as a um, feminine-focused approach to a marriage a lot. When, and what I meant was we tend to um, lean towards a female's perspective in a lot of things. And what I want to put on that is this. A lot of times we have this criteria that men should meet. Now, yeah, there are certain things he needs to be working and stuff, but as far as emotional treatment, uh, a lot of times we have with daughters that may get married and uh, we say, well, we find a man that's going to do like that even in the dating season. Um, and if he ain't, you know, doing all these things, opening doors and all those things that you did um, for your daughter as a father, then we just disqualify that man, which in fact, that shouldn't be true. That's your daughter. And a lot of times you didn't treat your wife, which is another man's daughter, exactly how that man would have thought that you should should have treated her or you don't treat your daughter in a way that, you know, you don't treat your wife in a way that you won't have that man treat your daughter. So what I'm saying, when we put certain criteria in place about just, you know, well, he should be doing this and he should be doing that. Yes, a lot of things we should be doing, but maybe that guy needs to learn more and fall short. So when we start putting certain expectations at a certain level on him, when you weren't at that level or even you didn't treat your wife how you say that that man should treat your daughter or, or you ain't treating your wife how you believe that. You know, like how that man, you know, believes that you should be treating his daughter. So because you married another man's daughter as well. So a lot of us have fights and things of that nature, call each other names. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, there are specific things that a man should do. But some of that stuff, we got to stop putting expectation and criteria on men and saying you don't fit the bill of this. Therefore, y'all shouldn't be married. That's given a lot of marriage. I want to focus on so. Maybe they ain't there. So I'm dealing with the objective look and not the subjective look. So there are facts. Like you may have a fact that, you know, um, I need to play the game because my job is very stressful. And if I don't de-stress, I'm going to snap on somebody that's going to lose the home. But your wife's saying that you need she needs time with you, right? Okay, so your wife needs time with you. But in your mind, the greater urgency is if I don't detox from this work, I'm going to snap. So I need to pay, play this game. Now, your stuff, that's a fact. Your job is stressful, okay? But what happens is, A, you're not praying about it and trusting God to help in that situation. And, uh, and maybe he may have something better for you. And B, you ain't found a thing to su supplant that game thing. So the truth, there is a fact. Your job is stressful. You need to detox. That's your subjective view of that situation. And it may be, you know, a fact. Your job may be. So your subjective view is it's stressful. But you haven't considered praying for another job. And you haven't considered spending some time with your wife, even though she um, even though it's true, you may lose your home. You don't, you ain't got the money to pay for it if you lose your temper at that job and snap on some people. But your wife needs time and attention. You need to replace that game with something else. Let's go out. Let's do something. Tell her to massage you. Maybe y'all can talk a massage. Watch a movie. Eat some popcorn. De-stress in a way that helps her to help keep your marriage. But your subjective view is... Which anybody look at a lot of people like, yeah, he do need to detox us. Yeah, the bigger picture, you know, the bigger picture of the thing is, which ain't the bigger picture, but the bigger picture is you having a complete marriage in God. But the bigger picture in your mind is, okay, I ain't spending time with you, but at least we got a roof on our head. You want to lose this car? You want to lose this? So instead of talking to God about it and asking him to intervene, all right? So your subjective view is, so that's what I'm talking about. Your objective view should be, God, you help me with this, and then I'm going to find some ways to spend time with my wife and detox from this job, spending time with my wife. That's the 
objective view. So that's what I'm talking about, subjective and objective. So, you know, when you tell people, you shouldn't be just telling people to divorce. Now I get if your life is in danger, then the Bible talks about living in peace. You know, that's you can't have people life in danger. Your husband coming around, he's trying to hurt and kill you. All right, but the Bible does specifically say um, often just to stay married and and do those things. So you should be coming in praying to the the praying to the the praying to the Holy Spirit, praying that He gives you the wisdom to give to this couple when you're giving advice because you get to go home and see that goes back to David and I'm not calling us like what David did but David had a man killed and then tried to cover up but he went back home and and, and just was trying to cover things up and kind of just do his king thing but this man is dead so he affected that family when he didn't have to but that's what he did he affected that family now, God made it work out, but he affected a family, okay? So, he didn't have to take that man's wife, all right? But he affected a family. And Uriah's wife mourned. That affected her and it affected him. But he went home and kind of was still, you know, he did his king thing and was trying to cover it up as well. But what I'm saying is, to another part of this, you're going to go home just and live your life while people have to deal with those effects, you don't know what that's going to do to their children or those people in there. All right. So when you start giving advice, put it in there. And then you got to come from the child's perspective. If you were ever um, a child of divorce or know about it, you know that it affects the child heavily. Maybe that child would have done better or want those parents to figure it out. Or maybe you want to wanted your folks to figure that thing out if it was possible. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying about that. So reconciliation should be at the top priority of your list it shouldn't be just divorce you don't you don't tell people that and go home because you got to get in that thing jesus came as a as a man god in the flesh and dealt with being hit literally hit he's god nobody can touch him but he dealt with the the feeling of that he wanted us to know he dealt with hunger and all that stuff he wanted us to know that how to live as a human being in this world so he felt everything that we felt literally so you have to get into that same mind frame if i got to feel like how this person gonna feel how would this affect them how is it affecting them as a whole and you got to come from biblical principles you know what i mean now if people just don't want to be married then you need to get to that root i just don't want to be married to this person because of xyz Okay, now that's a different story. But as far as just telling people to divorce as your first option and your first alternative, you know, I know different people in different age groups and different just in general who have been through fighting, cheating, some other stuff, crazy stuff, and they still together and still going strong in the Lord. So when you start doing that, I'm just telling you folks out here, you can't say that um, just to do that, you know, and I know that's usually geared towards the woman, towards the man. And so because a lot of times the women, because they're emotional and women deal with emotions differently. And I'm not knocking them. I'm not saying be a, abused or anything like that. But don't tell the women just to be divorced. You need to leave that. That shouldn't, because that's not biblical. You look in the Bible, it says, hey, be husband. wives don't leave your husband, and husband loves your wife. You don't just automatically say unless. Now, there is places in the Bible, of course, where he's going to say he wants you to live in peace. You can't deal with a man that's, gone, that's after your life, or even if he's detrimental to the family by gambling, losing a home. But a lot of things, I'm just saying, you got to talk to the Holy Spirit about that and get some, some wisdom through uh, him and his word. The word of God has to be your um, main criteria for how you approach people. So that's all I got to say. So God bless y'all.